Hi friends, this is Callie. Thanks so much for joining me today for a Mother's Day card using the Rub-A-Dub-Dub -Dub set by Lawn Fawn. I've created a pond scene using the Bayou Backdrop die. So we'll get started here by showing you the set that I'm using. It's this adorable scene with a bathtub at bath time for these little duck. But alternatively, I wanted to share with you that you could also use the Swan Soiree set and I'll pull it into the screen here in a second. But you can see that there are similar images. There are two swans with three little swanlings. So you could kind of make the same scene with the pond if you prefer swans over ducks. So we're gonna start coloring these duck here. For the mother duck, I'm gonna color her in a gray to kind of share a white duck. So we are starting off with some warm grays. I'm using W3 and then W1 and then W00 to blend it all out. And then for the feet and beak, I'm gonna be using the same colors on all of them, which are YR68 for the darkest shade, then Y15, and then Y11 to blend all of that out. And because it's such a small space, the coloring is so quick. And then on the duckling, I'm using similar shades as what was on the beaks, but I'm taking out that darker shade, and then I'm gonna go in with the medium shade. So the colors I'm using here are Y11, Y13, and Y15. And again, on those beaks, same as the mother duck. And then on that top duck there. I didn't color the beak because I know that later on I'm going to be cutting him off and using only the bottom portion of his body for the pond. Speaking of the pond, now that I'm done coloring these ducks, I'm going to pull in my Bayou Backdrops die and I'm going to use these cactail dies and grass blades to color with my Copic markers while I have my markers out. I die cut these pieces in white because I wanted to add a little bit of color and shading um, and that's not always something you can do on little die cuts like this when you're using ink blending and colored cardstock. So I am using a craft pick to hold down all the tiny pieces and I'm going to flick on some color with the greens and then for the cactile heads I'm adding some brown and dotting it for some texture and that creates a little bit of shading as well. And when I'm done doing that I'll add some adhesive to the tops here of that base piece and then I'll use a little jewel picker tool to help me adhere those tiny cactail heads over top. And once that's done, that will help us create our scene for later on. Moving on to the pond now, I've die cut that pond using some moonstone cardstock. I've got the ocean wave accents die and I've just die cut two little wave lines into that pond. And then we're gonna add a little bit of shading and color using some salty ocean distress oxide ink. I'm just lightly ink blending all around the pond. And then we'll do the same with this grass hillside here. There are three simple grassy hillsides to the die set and I've just used one to die cut this panel from cilantro cardstock. And again, I'll be ink blending it with some green ink and this one is Rustic Wilderness. So that just adds a little bit dimension, you know, things further away look a little bit darker. So I thought that that would create more depth and dimension for my scene. I've got a white panel here for my background now, and I'm just gonna ink blend a quick sky. I'm using Salty Ocean again, and then pulling in some antique linen for a soft yellow background for the sky. And it doesn't need to be perfect. A lot of it's gonna be covered up by that grassy hillside border panel that we created. So I just did some quick ink blending on the top there. I wanted some texture on my panels, so we're gonna go ahead and water down some of the same Distress Oxide inks that we used. I'm just gonna use a brush and splatter that ink on my background with the blue, and then the grassy panel I'm gonna do with the Rustic Wilderness that I used to ink blend that top portion with. This is a quick way for me to add some texture using the same coordinating ink so that it's not too much contrast, and I like being able to use the same Distress Oxide inks because it gives it a subtle look. I'm gonna lay the two panels on top of each other to make sure that I like the splatters and the way it looks before I start building my scene. And when that panel is dry, I'm gonna cut the stitching all the way around using the outside in rectangles. And then we can start creating our scene. First of all, I'm gonna be cutting this little duck here so that he can be seen popping out of the water and we don't want his head hanging out of the bottom of the pond. So I'm gonna trim him and then we'll adhere him to the back part of this pond and then we can adhere the whole pond to our grassy scene. And then we can start building our scene with the other images that we created earlier. 
Once this pond is in place, I'm gonna go ahead and take my other images and kind of play around with the layout before I adhere it all down. And when I'm happy with where things are, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere all of it with foam adhesive. So you see me doing that now, I'm just gonna speed through that real quick. And then we can use our accent images or die cuts from the cattails and grass blades and I'm just gonna fill my scene with those images. I'm gonna cut those cattails and tuck them behind the pond. Again, it makes it a little bit more realistic, more dimensional. And then I'll fill in the blank areas with those grass blades that I colored with my Copic markers earlier. All right, so that finishes up the scene for the card. And now we need to stamp our sentiment so that we don't forget for later. I tend to forget that part, so I'm glad I remembered. I'm just gonna piece my sentiments together and stamp them one line at a time, making sure that those cactils don't block the sentiments. And then to adhere my grassy panel, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere that using foam adhesive because I love lots of dimension. And we'll go ahead and adhere that whole thing to a card base. Gonna go ahead and add some liquid glue on the back of that. Not too much, just a little bit, but this gives me a little bit of wiggle room to center that over a card base. And to finish, I'm gonna add some white gel highlights over all of my images, and then I realized I forgot to add some blush on their little cheeks, so I did that. And that's a wrap. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks so much for stopping by. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And then also subscribe if you haven't already. I've got two more videos linked here for you if you're interested. I appreciate you watching and hope you have a great day. Bye everyone.